Griffith Piney Park Museum and Grappa, the Griffith and Regional Association of the Performing Arts, would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians and first storytellers of the land on which we live, work and perform. We pay our respect to Elders past, present and emerging and we extend that respect to all Indigenous people on the airwaves today. Vintage Voices, tune in to Griffith's History, a radio play series by Griffith Piney Park Museum and Grappa. There was a time when the wireless was king. The family ritual of gathering around the radio set was at the heart of households, tuning into their favourite stories or news from beyond their communities. Vintage Voices is the resurrection of this ritual, telling tales based on the real histories of Griffith through the nostalgic radio play. No Water by Christmas. Australia has battled through drought before and we will do so again. The 1960s would bring dry years of empty rainwater tanks and even children would find themselves praying for the heavens to open up. It is almost the summer holidays in the year of 1965. Reese, a 12-year-old schoolboy, strides with purpose across the yellowed sports oval of his primary school. Tiny clouds of dust rise behind his dull black school shoes. It is late in the year and the air is oppressively warm. It is hot, very hot. Reese's best mate Samuel hurries behind him. Samuel wipes sweat off his top lip as he runs tasting salt on his skin. The pair reach a small red brick building which houses the boys' toilets. Reese, stop. We'd get in so much trouble. No, we won't. You're short enough. The teachers will just think you're another infant's kid. Anyway, they can't blame it on us. It's not even our bathroom, so how could they possibly know it was us who did it? You sure? I've never gone into trouble before. And I don't think I could handle it if I did. Yeah, I promise. I'm the smartest kid at this school. Didn't you know that? If you go first, I'll follow right after. <sighs> I don't know. Last year, we were never... Times have changed, Samuel. Don't you want to be a rebel? Y y yeah, I do. I do. I am a rebel. Okay, I'm going in. The inside of the toilet building was several degrees cooler than outside and a lot darker. Small squares of light dotted the upper corner of the room where holes had been cut like checkerboards for ventilation. It was immediately clear to both boys that these holes did very little to prevent the sharp smell. Jeez, it stinks and these sinks are so tiny. Look at them. I don't remember them being as low as this. Sam, we're not babies anymore. Let's get to work on the plan. By turning on all these taps, I still don't get the plan rooms. My aunt says we won't even have enough water at Christmas if it doesn't rain. And Mum says there's no chance of rain next week at all. What are you talking about? It rained two weeks ago at the footy, remember? Real heavy for about ten minutes. We thought the game was going to be called off, but it wasn't. You know they just say that. The adults. It's because they like being sad about something. But what if... Sam thought back to a conversation he'd overheard last night. He'd walked into the kitchen as his mum sat down at the kitchen bench. His great auntie Marg had handed her a mug of tea that she just made and leant opposite her. Mel down the road says we'll be out of water by Christmas if we don't get any rain. Well, there's no chance of rain for the next week at least. Lord, send it down, Huey. The Tully family next door ran out of water in their rainwater tank yesterday. Oh dear. Yes, poor young Lynette got caught in the shower with a head full of shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well we shouldn't laugh. Poor Lynette. We do need it to rain though, and soon. Yes, the poor farmers have more than a head of shampoo to worry about. What? does that mean? Oh, hi mate. Didn't see you sneak up. No need to worry. Just means you need to have much shorter showers 
and with the bucket every time. It'll rain, Sam. It always does. Samuel wanted to believe them, but instead he looked across at the freshly cut pine tree they decorated with baubles and tinsel the night before. He felt a sharp spike of panic in his tummy. Samuel, Sam, ouch! Don't shove me, Rhys. It's just my parents. No, I'm right about this, Sam. You've just got to trust me. I'm an expert. I read that book about conspiracies. We could never run out of water. That's the truth. Can you remember it ever happened before? No. We're going to prove that this is the truth, and everyone, including the parents, will go back to acting normal so quick before someone walks in. And what if they do come in? You know infant kids are the biggest dobbers. Shh. Here, take this clay. Where did you get this stuff? I nicked it from the teacher's cupboard. I thought we'd use it to plug all the sinkholes. You turn on all those taps and I'll turn on all these taps. Maybe give the toilets a few flushes. Oh yeah, that'd be good too. Samuel looked down at the first tap and then gave it a slow turn. Water dribbled out. He plugged the hole with the bright green clay as best he could. He turned it a little further until a steady stream began to flow. Water pooled above the clay-clogged drain. He could hear Reese turning on all the taps beside him before the both of them stood back to observe their handiwork. Is that long enough? Should we turn them off now? No, a bit longer. We need to make it overflow. It's pretty brown, isn't it? The water. Nah. That's just the rust from the pipes. I learned that in science. You know the school is old as the town, so these pipes must be pretty old. Oh. Whoa, it's splashing over. Yeah, look at it go. <laughs> I hear someone. No, you don't. We should do this. We're done. Come on. No, we're not. All right, look. Give me five minutes, I'll check on in here to make sure there's no horseplay going on. Oh no, I hear someone. Let's go. Run! Stop pushing me! Get out of my way! Samuel went to run for the door, but Reese pulled him back, attempting to get in front of him, but instead slipping on the mud, crawling on the floor. Let go of my shirt! But Reese tightens his hold on Samuel's shirt, dragging him down with him. Water splattered up on the walls as the two fell. Samuel feels the water drench through his uniform as he lays on the floor, the tap still powering water down onto it. The boys continue to fight to beat each other out the door. Get up. Get off the ground. Go. Ugh. I'm completely soaked. Stop pushing me. Boys, what is going on? Get up. Now. Mr Pearson stood towering over the two boys. His face was quickly turning red. Samuel thought he saw tears in Mr. Pearson's eyes, but he couldn't be sure. Surely not. Mr. Pearson briskly strode around the fallen boys and turned all the taps off, one by one. Come with me. The boys followed Mr. Pearson out of the dim bathroom and into the bright playground. The light was almost blinding as they stepped out. Both boys raised a hand to shield their eyes, the heat hitting them like a solid wall, the air too dry and filled with dust. The chirp of a cicada whirred to life until it abruptly ended with a metallic plop on the roof. A newly fed magpie, thought Samuel. Cicadas never seem to last long these days. That's what Miss Gill said yesterday as they came in from morning sport. She knew a lot about animals. They rounded a corner and entered the empty classroom. Mr Pearson shut the door behind them. Boys, what have you done? You? You? Don't you know we're in a drought? We've got... Well, well... Speak! We're letting you know you, the truth. The truth? What's the truth? We, th we thought that. I didn't think. You've got that right, Samuel. 
Didn't what, boys? This isn't funny, you realize. This town is running out of water, and here you two are flooding the boys' toilets, wasting all of this water, and for what reason? What is the truth? The truth is... The truth is... Yes, yes? The truth is, it's not going to rain at all next week. And we'll be out of water by Christmas. Samuel felt a tear roll down his face. He watched as it dropped onto his now muddy school shoes. And my tree is already up. No Water by Christmas was written by Lisa Semler and directed by Bonnie Owen. Produced by Bonnie Owen and Griffith Piney Park Museum. Edited by Aaron Grugan. Original music by Catherine Innes. Selected sound effects courtesy of Charles Sturt University Sound Files. No Water by Christmas featured the voice talents of Belinda Owen, James Bailey, Simon K. McLeish, Micheline Neamey, Coralie McKenzie, Stephen Forrest and Brett Morton. Next week on Vintage Voices, meet Bagtown's newest residents in Mickey Cush's coach. <laughs>